Hi, I'm Melinda and I work in the digital human space. I consult for companies in VFX, gaming, animation, face tech, pretty much anything that involves a face. So I wanted to use my knowledge to talk a little bit about what might have been going on with the Luke Skywalker cameo in the latest Mandalorian episode. What might have made that feel off? What were some challenges that the artists or people working on that probably faced? Some things that might have made new Luke difficult to construct from the old Luke are when you're de-aging somebody, it helps if the person you're de-aging doesn't look too different from the state that they used to look that you're trying to achieve. Mark Hamill doesn't look that similar to how he did in the Star Wars movies. He doesn't look like the Luke we know and love. The other thing that's important to have for a successful recreation is good reference material. That's another obstacle that the artists and everyone working on that probably faced. So going back to the de-aging point, as we age, there are many changes to our face. Our face will sag over time, our brows will fall down and encroach on our eyelid space. So some key areas that will be different are the eyelid areas, what your actual brows look like, how they rest on the bone over here. Also, this area is going to be different. So we have fat pads over here that slowly over time droop down and sag. They change the way this area looks, they change the way this area looks. So basically your jaw contour can end up totally different. So in the case of Mark Hamill, not only did he age 40 years, 40 years is a long time, his brows have begun to sag down. His eyelid space looks different than it did in the earlier Star Wars movies. And his jawline is completely different, not just because of the gravity forces from the aging process, but also because of weight gain. Even though it's the same person, he has a different face. Another thing that I don't think a lot of people working on de-aging actually consider is the way that our muscles move when we're young versus old. Our muscles degrade over time. So the way that our muscles move when we're younger and the interaction that they have with our skin, which loses its elasticity, that combination is going to affect the way the movements look. So even if your actor looks more or less the same, they might have different facial movements because of the muscle degradation over time. We have that point covered. Mark Hamill does not look enough like he used to. The next point is reference material. So besides the original Star Wars trilogy, Mark Hamill wasn't really in much else. He did a lot of voice acting after, but that's not super helpful for getting reference material for what he looks like. Also, we have to consider the quality of the reference material. Most of the Mark Hamill reference material was from the 80s because you can't really use footage from A New Hope because Mark Hamill got in a car accident after the filming of A New Hope and he had to get reconstruction on his face. So he looked a lot different in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi than he did in A New Hope. So basically A New Hope useless. If you think about it that way, the only really good reference material that you can even have of Mark Hamill is limited to Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back. Getting a good amount of reference material is paramount to recreating a character successfully. Considering the difficulties that I just went over, that explains the two things that I think look the most off in the Luke cameo. So the two things I think look most off are the eye area and the jawline area. Going back to what I mentioned about how our eyebrows sag over time and our eyelid area changes, it makes sense why the new Luke's eyes just don't look fully right. So Mark Hamill has very expressive eyes. They're big, round, bright, and they move a lot. He does something called upper lid razor a lot. It's when you bring your upper eyelid up to reveal more of your sclera. Even though they were attempting to capture the Luke in his more stoic Jedi vibe, the life from Mark Hamill's eyes just was not captured in the cameo. So that's for sure gonna contribute to the uncanniness and things just not looking right. Another thing that I think might have been a little bit of a short side is if you look at the digital version of Luke Skywalker, the eyelid area over here is a little bit too straight. If you look at Mark Hamill's eyelids, he has more rounded, he has more protruding eyes. They're a little bit droopier and that just wasn't captured in the cameo. Now going to the second point, the jawline. Figuring out how to properly capture a jawline from multiple angles is extremely difficult. That's why when the new Luke looks in different directions, that's when everything starts to break the most. What I mentioned about all of the footage is if you have enough footage, you can potentially capture the jawline in different angles and different states. But because of the lack of available data to go off of, that's really hard to do. So that could potentially explain why 
Luke 2.0 was so robotic and felt like if he moved too much, he would break. It's hard to make that person move and have it look good. Considering all of these factors, I want to bring up another point. There was a body double, Max Lloyd Jones. And one thing that I noticed about Luke 2.0 is features of Max Lloyd Jones seem to creep into the look of the new Luke Skywalker. Things that I noticed were the eyes. The eyes looked a little bit too Max Lloyd Jonesy and some jaw features in the eyebrows as well because there was A, not enough footage, and B, because Mark Hamill now just not look enough like Mark Hamill then, it's possible that when trying to reconstruct the Luke Skywalker that they had to pull some face features or structures from Max Lloyd Jones, and that's why some of his face kind of leaks out into the new Luke Skywalker. So even if you're just using a body double, making sure that the face is aligned in certain ways can be really impactful to make sure that everything looks better. I don't actually know what processes they use, but whatever they use, whether it be full art or tech, everyone needs references and that's just something that wasn't possible to get in this scenario. So overall, not bad. I would definitely pay more attention to the eye area, but I can't complain overall, they did a great job with what limitations they had, no further comments.